Welcome everybody, I'm Dr. Sam Spinelli with Citizen Athletics and today I'm going to take you through a 10 minute mobility and stretching routine that you can utilize daily. We're huge fans of getting in regular movement as it helps our body just feel good. You can use this routine in the morning, you can use it before workouts, you can use it as a cool down, whatever feels right for you. This series has a combination of active and static movements. The active ones are going to be going in and out of positions where we challenge our joints to go into deeper ranges and work on control of motion. For the static ones, we'll move into a position and hold there. We might try to get deeper into the position, but we're not going to move in and out. And this is going to be helping to get our muscles and our nervous system comfortable in that position. This sequence is going to flow where we do roughly 30 seconds for each movement or 30 seconds for each side of a movement if it's unilateral. If you find that you like any of these movements and you want to do them for more or a little bit longer, you can definitely just pause the video, do a little bit longer duration, or you could alternatively play the video back and repeat with the cues. All right, let's get into our routine. The first one we're gonna start with is the kneeling rock back with the ankles plantar flex. This is an active movement. We're gonna be starting on our hands and knees with our feet pointing away, and then rocking our hips back towards our heels. This gets our pelvis, hips, and knees moving into some deeper ranges, while also getting a nice stretch on the front of our shins. You can play around with your knee and shin position, finding what feels best for you. Some might find a straight, narrow position is most comfortable, whereas others might go towards a wider and more angled position. We're gonna rock back until we've done all 30 seconds. Once we're done that 30 seconds, we're then gonna transition into a combo movement of thread the needle with a quadruped thoracic twist. We can stay in the same position as prior, but now we'll take one hand off the ground, reach under and across our body with the back of our hand on the ground. You can let your shoulder drop towards the ground, stretch your back and the back side of your shoulder. And then we'll reach up to the roof with that same hand letting your back rotate while stretching out our chest. You can return to stretching under and going through these back and forth for the rest of the 30 seconds. You can have a brief pause at each position and really try to stretch out. After that 30 seconds, we'll then switch to the other side and repeat having that hand reach across and then reach up. While you're going through this, you can have your eyes follow your hand and that way we can get a little bit of neck rotation involved in the motion. For those who are a little bit more limber and want a more challenging stretch, you can take your hand and place it on the back of your head and that way your shoulder is in a more externally rotated position. This will put some of your muscles on a more of a deep stretch, particularly those muscles on the front of your shoulder. Everyone else is definitely open to trying this out, but it is a little bit more challenging of a position. Now that 30 seconds is up, we're going to transition to our next movement, which is the child's pose with a lateral bend. Now that we've got our ankles, knees, and hips more comfortable, we can sit deep and stay in this position. We're gonna then drop our chest to the ground and get into a child's pose position. From here, we're gonna walk our hands to one side and stretch out the lateral side of our trunk. This is gonna be a static stretch, so we're gonna stay here for 30 seconds. Take a nice deep breath in and let that breath out and try and relax here. You can focus on reaching with both hands and really try to lengthen out that side. After 30 seconds, we'll then walk our hands over to the other side and transition the stretch to the opposite side of the trunk. Try to keep your hips down and sink into your ankles as you're holding this position. You may notice that as you transition from side to side that one side is easier than the other. That's completely normal. Just do your best and sit into it. After you're done 30 seconds on each side, we're then gonna sit down and get into our next movement, which is gonna be the butterfly stretch with a twist. Most people are probably familiar with the butterfly stretch, and it's a great movement to get a stretch on our groin muscles. You'll be sitting with the soles of your feet together and then your knees out to the sides. We're going to add a twist to it to get more spinal rotation and get some shoulder motion incorporated. Take your arm, reach to your opposite side, and have your arm come down so that the back side of your hand is against your opposite leg. We can add a stretch to our pec muscles by having our opposite hand reach up and behind her head and really trying to have that elbow reach back. 30 seconds should be done and we can switch sides. While you're in the stretch, you can try to focus on having your knees drive down and get your back more extended. If you're looking to emphasize your hips more, try getting your back more extended and that way we can put more emphasis on the hips and less on the back. Let your breath out, your shoulders sink down and try and rotate deeper into the position.
as you wrap up to 30 seconds on the stretch, we're gonna stay on the ground, leave one leg rotated in this position, but then we're gonna flip our other leg back behind us and get into a position called the 90-90 shin box. Here we have one leg bent in front of us in external rotation and one leg behind us in internal rotation. Then we'll be going through some trunk motion by incorporating a reach towards each direction. Start off by taking your back arm and reaching forward out and past your front knee, sliding out as far as you can along the ground. Then we'll reach back with that hand as far as we can. You're gonna be going back and forth between reaching forward and back for the 30 seconds. Since this is a one-sided drill again, we'll do 30 seconds and then switch. You can feel free to have one hand on the ground to help support you so that there's less challenge in trying to stay up and more focus on mobility. As you go, think to try and get your pelvis to rotate with you in each direction, trying to gradually get more motion in that direction. After you finish that up, we're gonna get into our next movement, which is gonna be the quadruped foot and toe stretch into downward dog. We'll be in a similar position to the first movement, but with our feet flipped over so that we can get a stretch on the back side of our ankles, our feet, and our toes. You can sit back for a moment, and then we're gonna drive our hips up, extend our knees, and drop our chest. This is the classic downward dog position from yoga, and it's a great movement to stretch at the back side of our legs and our shoulder extenders. You'll go back and forth between these positions for 30 seconds, pausing each one briefly. Once done, we're then gonna stand up and we're gonna get to a movement to help emphasize the lateral and anterior muscles. This is the rear foot elevated hip stretch with a bend and reach. You'll need to place your rear foot on something like a couch or a chair, and then you can have your knee on the ground, resting on something such as a pillow or something else to make it more comfortable. If this is too much of a stretch, you can also just have your rear foot on the ground. From here, we'll take the arm that's on the side with the foot on the ground, placing our hand on our hip, and then our other arm will reach overhead and we're gonna bend and rotate our trunk slightly. We're gonna hang out here for 30 seconds. You can think to squeeze your butt on that extended side, helping to get your hip stretched more. You should feel a stretch down the front of your thigh and hip. As we switch to the other side, focus on not letting your hips rotate or bend as you do this. With your hips locked in position, reach and stretch your trunk and shoulder. Try not to arch your back really hard here, and instead focus on getting the hips extended first, but then getting trunk and shoulder motion secondary. That should be about 30 seconds. We're now gonna take our foot off that elevation and just get into a half kneeling position. For this next movement, we're going to be doing the half kneeling adductor dip, which is going to be done in half kneeling, except we're going to take our leg out to the side and be in a more abducted position. That way we can stretch out our adductors. We're going to be rocking back and forth as we do this, making it an active stretch. You can play around with your foot position. The further your foot is in, the more you'll be challenging your ankle motion. Rock back and forth and see how it feels. We can switch sides. As you play around with that foot position, you'll notice that you're likely not getting as much of a groin stretch when your foot is pulled more in. This isn't a good or a bad thing, it just gives us the ability to individualize the movement to your needs. If you're looking to have more of an adductor stretch, you probably want that foot a little bit further out. If you're trying to get more of an ankle stretch, then you can bring that foot further in. Keep trying to drive your knee out and back so we can get a good challenge to the adductors. Once you've done each side, we're gonna walk our hands out, get into a push-up position, and we're gonna do the groiner stretch. Here you'll take a big step forward with one side, trying to get your shin by your arm. This will take your front leg into deeper hip flexion, something we haven't got to work on a ton yet. For the back leg, if you keep your knee extended, you'll get more of a stretch on the front side of your hips. You can even try doing that butt squeeze that we did in the last stretch to get more of it.
after you've done about 30 seconds, we can then transition over to the other leg. Try to keep your chest up and your back relatively neutral. It's easy for your back to round over as we do in many of these stretches. And that's not inherently a bad thing. But again, we're trying to emphasize the hips in this position. So we want to try and get the back more neutral as we go through it and not have a ton of motion occur. For those who are more comfortable with this stretch, you can take your front leg further out and really enhance your hip separation and challenge the hamstrings. Now we're going to get into standing and do something called a squat to stand. With the hip width stance, we're going to bend over, reach towards our toes and our feet, grabbing on if we can, otherwise just reaching as low as possible, and then dropping our hips down. This will take us into a squat with arm assistance. From here, we're going to pause for a second, trying to get into a good position, getting our chest up, our hips low, our knees out, and then we'll shoot our hips back up and we can get into a nice hamstring stretch. We're going to switch back and forth between these positions for 30 seconds trying to sink deeper into the squat each time, trying to sink deeper into the hamstring stretch. After you've done that, we're then going to get into a more challenging movement, the Cossack Squat. Here you'll take a wide stance, having your toes flare out, and then we'll squat off to one side while keeping the other leg straight. With that straight side, we're gonna have the foot turn up so the toes point towards the roof, and then sink down as deep as we can to that hip. From here, you'll transition over to the other side, trying to stay low as you do it. By keeping the knees out as you transition side to side, we can put a really big emphasis on challenging the groin muscles. For this movement, we're going to alternate back and forth between sides for one minute total. Take your time, pause on each side momentarily, getting a deep stretch, and then go slow across, really feeling that mid stretch. Now, if you find that this is too challenging and you're just not able to do it very well, we can go to the seated version. In the seated version, we set up as if we were just doing one side at a time with our hips supported. You can pause for 30 seconds and then switch to the other side. Now once we're done the caustic squat, we're going to move into our last exercise of the day, which is the deep squat hold. We'll set up with that roughly hip width stance and then sink down to the bottom of the squat. And we're going to hold this for 30 seconds. You can utilize arm assistance if you need to, but we're going to try and maintain a nice tall upright position with the hips low and the knees out without the arms if we can. The goal here is to finish off in an active and deep position that utilizes a lot of what we've been working on. If you'd like to have a bit of a rock here, going side to side, forward and back, or rotational, whatever you feel like, go for it. Adjust it to feel right for you. Try to keep pulling yourself down lower, getting your knees out and your chest up. Once you're done the squat, that's it for the day. That should be about 10 minutes, give or take some time, for changing sides and changing positions. In total, we did 12 movements that were done for either 30 seconds a side or 30 seconds in total. We picked these movements because they challenge the majority of your body, utilizing almost every joint and almost every muscle. If there were other movements that you wish were incorporated or different ways of doing these movements, definitely feel free to adjust it and make it your own. We like to program movements like these as part of our warm up, as part of our cool downs, and then also on our lighter training days. If you'd like to learn more about the programming that we offer, check out the link in the description box below. Thanks for following along. Make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more content. We'll catch you in the next video.